Depression. By 1939, she saw the start of World War II. By 1949, she's gone through the incarceration, she's gotten married, and had three wonderful children. <laughs> <laughs> County Country Market had opened. She was stretching that little that actually opened in 57. So she went to work for the town and country, and that's where she found her position in life, which was at check stand number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where she uh, worked for the next 25 years. So 19, by 1969, she saw men walk on the moon. And this was only in her first 50 years. <laughs> Which is pretty remarkable. So she's seen many things. Um, so what I'd like to say is that um, I know tonight the common thread that joins us all is mom, right? And so we have, you all have unique and different connections to mom. So I hope you all share stories with each other as you have dinner <coughs> about uh, your connection to mom. Because each one will be unique. And uh, the last thing I'll point out is that mom's birthday was actually yesterday. And so starting today, she's working on her second hundred years. <laughs> certain ways, but um, great speech, Bill. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. Yeah. So, anyway, um, well, I've known Kay for quite a long time. She oftentimes refers to me as her Norwegian son, <laughs> but I kind of made a commitment to Bill and Bruce that I would only speak for one minute <laughs> for every year that I've known Kay. Oh. <laughs> So, at 9 o'clock when you guys are ready, I'll stop. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, uh, the funny. truth of all of this is, uh, uh, 65 years ago, or 1953, I met Kay. So, uh, I kind of became part of the family as uh, a Norwegian adopt adopted brother, and uh, that life... Uh, obviously has gone on for a long time. So I was trying to think of, well, well what should I say? What, could, what should I talk about? Because how do you talk about somebody that you've been involved with for 65 years, and of course she's got a couple more years on me, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> so, but, uh, so I thought, well, you know, uh, I thought about that for a while, and I said, you know, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of something that she told me a few years ago, and uh, that was uh, this, as she was volunteering at the um, historical museum in, down in Bainbridge, a, uh, a group came in. Uh, she was a mere 96 or 97, so she was quite young then. <laughs> and uh, they came in and they, uh, you know, she showed them a about the museum and all of the things that are involved, which I'm sure every one of you have seen, but it's a beautiful place. And uh, she said, uh, she said, uh, they, they talked to her about it and they said, well, you know, how long have you been involved? And she says, well, I was born in 1919. <laughs> and they go, well, no, that's impossible because you're only in your 70s, right? And she goes, well, no, I'm kind of like 97. And they go, well, you know what? What? Uh, you know what is your secret to this life? And she goes. She said three things. She said, "Work hard, be happy, and love everyone." Mm -hmm. So, 
that kind of hit my heart a little bit, to be honest with you. So let's think about that. Work hard. So work hard is K started in the, the farming community doing strawberries at Sakai Farm when she was quite young. And I'm quite sure she worked hard because I've done a little farming and it's terrible. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then uh, of course she uh, went to Bainbridge High School and graduated with uh, you know lots of honors. Uh, but I wasn't born yet, so I don't know about any of her grades except for her penmanship grade. She must have got a A plus because yeah. she's, got, she's got so because she's got the most beautiful handwriting that I've ever seen. And then uh, as time progressed, unfortunately, the tragic time of World War II and the incarceration of Japanese Americans. It, you know, she didn't, she didn't really let that bother her. She went to Manzanar, worked in the hospital, then was, went to Manadoka and got back into her roots working on the farm. And then, of course, then she came back to Bainbridge and, and uh, through the years and got a job at Town & Country. So in Town & Country, when it opened in 1957, and Kay, was, as our Bill already mentioned, was number one checker. And uh, she was, uh, her lines were always long, because people, <laughs> she loved to talk. And she talked to everybody and made friends with everybody. So as she was talking there, I started thinking back about that. Well, where was I? Well, Kay was in the check stand. And I was in the ice cream free line. So, so I was getting free ice cream as she was checking. So. But after her 25 years there, I think is when her life kind of really became really important to the community. And that was, uh, she started volunteering. She just, took, she never stopped working. She started volunteering at um, the bargain between children's orthopedic and uh, of course she went to Helpline and she cooked a mean soup because I as a firefighter we had to go in there once in a while and I'd sneak a little of the soup and she was yeah this is just great and then uh, she got in, involved with the, uh, uh, the historical society and then also uh, of course then it came up Pritchard Park and then we all know about Sakai School, where she actually did some training and worked with the kids in the sixth grade. It was fantastic. And I have to tell you a quick story there, because you know I, I got 65 minutes to go. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, anyway, so right there, I was teaching there one time. I used to work for the fire department, and I was working at Sakai, and I saw a picture of Kay. And there was a couple little ladies that were there from the sixth grade, and I go, oh, that's my mom. You know, so she goes, what? And the little girl goes, what? I go, well, she's my adopted mom. And here was really hit it on the head. The little girl looks at me, and she goes, she's cool. Ah. <laughs> and yeah. That was really cool. <laughs> so anyway, beyond that, you know, uh, thinking about all of those things is, I'd like to finish with saying, I think uh, probably everyone here feels the same way as what I'm gonna say is, you're amazing, you are uh, a gift to this community. Um, you strive to create good, uh, you're, you're beautiful. <laughs> you don't. You. I say you look seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and I, I'm a little bit younger, and I would have dated you if I could. <laughs> <laughs> so, in all of that, it is, <laughs> you're an inspiration. You are truly an inspiration. I love you. <laughs> Happy birthday. <Aww. laughs>
unfortunately, I have to go last. <laughs> I want to, again, echo what Bill and Bud said. Thank all of you for coming. Bob has acquired a fantastic group of friends uh, in her, you know, later years. And uh, so it's been a hundred years, incredible. Uh, started working on the farm and then not being able to speak English. She first went to school and, uh, you know, being incarcerated and then becoming a wife and a mother and working 25 years of town and country. So that was a quite a career mom. But I mean, I think the uh, crowning thing is that you become a historian and a narrator for what's gone on on Bainbridge Island for the Japanese and we've made this incredible cadre of friends and uh, I just want to say happy birthday mom. Thank it's you, been mom. a great 100 years. Huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes I'm going to cut it off there. Thank you very much for everybody. <laughs>